Hey guys, Brandon with Flying Miata back for another FM Live. Today we're going to talk about cold air. And we're also going to talk about a little bit of hot air. Um, I suppose in multiple ways. So we have our new Randall intakes that we're gonna talk about today. So as always, you have questions, drop them in the comments. We will try to get to them live. If we don't get to them live, we will get to them after the fact. So cold air intake, there's there's a bunch of them on the market. Uh, why? It's because they're easy. You, you take a filter, you put it on the end of a stick and you say, it makes lots of horsepower, yay. Um, and sometimes it does feel like it makes lots of horsepower because they are noisy. So an open element air filter, which is kind of a filter on a stick, is gonna make a lot of noise. It's gonna make the car sound more like a race car. However, usually the air filter will sit about here or maybe even here or basically in the middle of the hot engine bay. Uh, so they make more noise than power. Usually they can actually be detrimental to the power of your car. So um, that's why I say kind of cold air intakes because they're marketed as such, but they're actually not. So our Randall intake actually is a legitimate cold air intake. So our Randall intake uh, still reuses the stock plumbing here because of the power levels that we're talking about. It still flows really well. And then instead of a little plastic snorkel that kind of comes over here off of the air box, and it's, you know, coolish air kinda for the, uh, um, from the engine bay. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not, it's just the cooler of the air in there. Uh, we have our Randall. So you can see it's a duct that comes up here to the firewall. So we drill a hole or cut a hole in the firewall there. Let's show it to you real quick. So you get cold air because it is actually outside, fully outside of the engine bay. Um, it's also actually high pressure air. So if you can imagine air flowing over the hood and it hits the windshield and it's gonna kind of go up over the windshield, but that's gonna create a high pressure area right here. That's why this is here so that that high pressure air doesn't go into your engine bay, which is gonna impede airflow through your heat exchangers, but that's a whole different discussion that we have lots of videos on, so watch those. But here it is a, a benefit because it's gonna shove the air into the intake, it's gonna kind of force feed the engine. So it gives you, gives you a bit of power there. Uh, how much power? Five horsepower. So, which doesn't sound like a lot, uh, but that's 5%. That's on about a 100 horsepower car. So that's actually pretty significant and it's a, crazy easy install. Um, so what what do you get? What is involved? So you get this silicone duct here. It's shaped, and these, these are prototypes, so they're a little uglier than the production pieces. Um, but you get this guy that's shaped exactly how it is, how it needs to be in place, but it's also very durable, very flexible, it, they, they last forever. This is the same kind of stuff we've been using on our turbo kits for forever. So it also comes with this 3D printed firewall plate. So this guy uses pre-existing holes on the, oh, I didn't check the year range. There's one year range that doesn't have one of the holes, so you have to drill an extra hole. Um, but basically it uses at least one, probably two pre-existing holes. Um, has a little clip built in for the uh, hydraulic line for the clutch uh, master cylinder. And then it has this guy that the silicone slips onto. Um, it also has this grid pattern in there. That's twofold. Uh, it has these, these guys right here are the crosshairs, the center point for this. So that gives you a perfect point to mark or two perfect points to mark for your hole saw, for your hole saw here, you can mark here and then you cut your firewall based on this. The short version, this is a really nice template for you. Um, we also, so this guy is for the 94 to 97. This one is for the 99 to 05. You can see it's a two piece. So we have this guy here, a little uh, hook, and then a coupler basically, uh, all 3D printed out of our carbon fiber infused nylon uh, to hold everything in exactly the place that it's supposed to be in. So short version, suit, I mean, you have to cut a hole in the firewall, but otherwise it is basically the easiest thing ever to install. And it is actually effective. It will give you a little more intake growl. It's not gonna be like a filter on a stick kind of loud, but it does give you a little bit more of that growl uh, that 
it's, it's, it's enough to sound good and not so much to be really annoying, basically. <laughs> uh, now this, sorry, I forgot the, the twofold part. The second part of this grid here, with where it is, if you park the car underneath a tree, uh, it can suck up leaves if you get leaves stacked up in there high enough. This is gonna just keep you from sucking up the bigger stuff. That's a bit of a stretch, but basically it's just a detail kind of thing that we put in there. Um, okay, now bear in mind that some race classes do not allow holes, so that uh, this might not be legal for some race classes, but you'll be fine for, for most of them, and obviously for street cars. So. Uh, so that's basically it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, now, where did the Randall name come from? That came from the original manufacturer of this, of the Randall intake, which was actually made out of carbon fiber, which was cool because it was sexy and not cool because it was about double the cost of this one. Um, the quality control was okay. Okay, but you know, not perfect. Um, and it was a little more of a struggle to get in place because it's 100% rigid. There's no give in anything. With this, you can just manhandle it into place, let it spring out, and then you're good to go. So there you go. Okay, so we have some questions here. I'll go through the questions we got ahead of time and then we'll look for any live questions. So again, if you have any questions, drop them in. We will get to them. Uh, yeah, so why is it called a Randall intake? Please rewind 10 seconds and watch that again, and there you go. A guy named Randall uh, came up with it and manufactured it for us a long time ago, uh, an old version of. <clears throat> do you have to have a tune to realize the horsepower gains? No, you do not, absolutely not. Um, for one, you can't really tune these guys without a standalone ECU, um, but for another, it's just, it, there's more airflow. Uh, there's more airflow because of the high pressure air and that is measured in the mass airflow sensor, so everything is compensated for accordingly, no big deal. Uh, and it's also cold air. Cold air is uh, more dense air, there's more oxygen in it, so that's where a lot of the power comes from. That is also measured and accounted for in the stock uh, ECU and sensors and such. So short version, no, nothing necessary, just bolted on. Will there, are there, will there be a version compatible with FM turbo kits or M45 superchargers? No, highly unlikely. If you wanted to do something yourself, okay. Um, the M45 is extremely dated and we have better options for you. Um, but you know, if that's what you have, that's cool. Uh, but short version, no, the M45, that's not something we're gonna do. The M45 is also gonna heat up the air a whole lot, which on the one hand means you need it that much more, and on the other hand means you're shooting yourself in the foot, kind of, anyway. But with our turbo kits, uh, most of them, the, the intake sits right here, and there's an air box here. Um, one of the things from uh, development on the tur NC turbo kit that we have figured out, we always knew heat shields were, were okay. If you don't enclose the top of the heat shield, they are not very effective. Um, the turbo, the heat shields that we use uh, seal to the hood uh, or have a lid on top of them. That's one of the main things with the NC turbo kit. Regardless, you can use an aqueduct here to feed cold air. Uh, if you have one of our turbo kits, that's really the best way to do it. You could do just a straight hose back here um, to feed cold air that way if you wanted to. Um, probably not something we're gonna look at, uh, but hey, you never know. Um, if you want one, let us know. Uh, and if there are enough of you that want one, we will, we will dig into that. Okay, five horsepower sounds like a lot. Are there actual dyno sheets public for us to see? Uh, yes, it does sound like a lot, I agree, especially with kind of how intakes generally work. Um, but yeah, we do have uh, dyno sheets on the website uh, for a 1.6, uh, the chosen honest five horsepower increase with the hood closed. So that's the thing that I forgot to mention with a lot of the other cold air intakes on the market. You know, dyno runs are often done with the hood up, which kind of makes sense for a number of different reasons, but I don't know about everybody else, but I don't drive around with my hood open very often. Um, I find that there are some drawbacks to that particular method. Uh, so it's not really a logical argument uh, to give you power numbers with a hood open because that's not what you're doing, right? Uh, particularly with what we're talking about here. So the dyno charts for these guys are with the hood closed in a real world situation. Uh, so you can see any of the kind of, it's sucking hot air in 
or not, as the case is with these parts type of deal. So for your intake, if they have a dyno chart, make sure that dyno is, was done with the hood closed. Uh, will you sell the firewall connection piece as a standalone for those of us that want to build a custom intake? Good question. Honestly, not something that we had considered, but I don't really see why not, frankly. Uh, I'm not ready to commit to it yet, but very possibly. So we will, we will look into that. Um, the, let's see, how much does it actually affect intake temperatures? So we have not, uh, measured temperatures on it. Um, kind of one of those we don't really need to because again, you're sucking air from right here, which is pretty close to the exhaust manifold. Uh, on your stock setup from here, it is 100% outside of the engine bay. Um, so no, I don't have actual numbers for you on that. I apologize, uh, but it is a dramatic difference uh, and it does increase in a five horsepower increase. Okay, uh, what are the cons of running this setup? I mean, really, you have to drill a hole in the firewall. Uh, you have to stay naturally aspirated with this setup so it doesn't work with our turbo kit. I guess that's a con. Uh, outside of that, it works great. You know, weather, whatever, there's another question in there, so I'll get to it in a minute. Um, but no, I, I honestly can't really come up with any cons there, so. Uh, what drop-in filter does FM recommend for this kit to optimize the gain, gains? So something like a KNN is going to give you more flow. So that is going to optimize the gains. That's going to give you a little more power. Um, the filtering might not be quite as thorough as with a paper filter. So, you know, weigh your pros and cons there. But if you're looking to optimize the gains, something like a KNN uh, filter is going to be the best bet for you. Will the windshield washer relocation cause issues with this? Excellent question. So for those of you that don't know, we have a windshield washer relocation kit that takes it from over there, depending on which specific car you're talking about, and puts it right here. So it will physically fit with the washer relocation kit. However, you're basically, there's gonna be a surface right there so there's not a whole lot of room to uh, suck air in. So we would not recommend it. It does physically fit, um, but it's not something that we recommend doing. So, and we will do some more uh, actual detailed investigation into that later. So, uh, how does this compare to the 3D printed Cobra style intakes horsepower wise? I have no idea. Um, we have not tested those. Uh, I was, I did not look around real long, but I was unable to find horsepower numbers on those. So I don't know. Um, it's, it's an intriguing concept that has pros and cons, uh, I guess, but, but whatever, that's a separate thing. So I, I don't know. I can't answer your question. Unfortunately, I can tell you that this one will give you about five horsepower. What about water ingress? Will this let weather get into my intake? So no is the short version. There's a little asterisk on that. So <clears throat> if it's raining, there's gonna be kind of moisture all around, including in here, and it will suck in some moisture. It's not going to suck in water. Um, you can see the, the intake is right here, but the cowl was very deep and there's a drain over here that you can't see. So no, I mean, it, it's it's, you don't have to worry about uh, hydro locking your engine because you sucked in so much water. A little bit of water in the intake makes no difference. Um, it's gonna basically evaporate, uh, vaporize immediately. Um, we actually do this intentionally on some cars with water injection. So putting some water in mist kind of thing, which is all that would be, not a problem, totally fine. Okay, and then um, another temperature. Question, sorry to answered that one. Uh, is there a designated spot in this for an IAT sensor? No, there is not. So the stock setup has an IAT sensor. It, depending on the car you're talking about, uh, on a 1.8, it's gonna be in the, uh, on an NA8, I should say, 9497, it's gonna be in the mass airflow sensor here. In a 9093, it's in the AFM uh, airflow meter, which is basically the same thing, just an older version of. Uh, the NB has it in the air box as well. Uh, but it's a separate one. So we don't need a provision for it. If you have a standalone ECU, then you will need to find a place to put it. Um, but if you have a standalone ECU, you're probably a smart enough person to figure that out. It's not terribly, terribly complicated there. 
Okay, so those are the uh, ahead of time questions. What kind of live questions do we have? One. Can you talk about runner length and how it affects horsepower? Runner length and how it affects horsepower. So, okay, um, we, we, uh, okay, runner length and how it affects horsepower. Um, we are increasing the intake length. I'm not sure that we are affecting the runner length as in the post throttle body. So um, it is slightly longer, but I'm not sure that it's really enough to make a difference. Yeah, uh, very good question. Apologies, that should have been a thing I mentioned at the very beginning. So this is 100% legal in all 50 states. It does have a CARB EO number. It will include a CARB EO sticker. So there's no funny business. Um, you don't have to worry about anything, 100% legal. Any other questions? Okay. So that's it. Thank you, as always, everyone. Um, these are on our website now. They will be shipping out in the next few days. Um, if you have any more questions, drop them in the comments. We will get to them when we can. Uh, and be sure to stop back next week. We'll have another exciting FM Live for you guys. Thanks. We'll see you next time.